Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. I'm so honored to welcome back to the show Ms. Robin Raiden. For over 20 years, she's been an Emmy award-winning television producer and really helping pioneer the shift that's happening in Hollywood. There's some incredible women doing incredible things, and I'm so glad you can yeah. shed light on what you've noticed in the industry. Well, I mean, it is. I'm sure you guys have been talking about how it's um, Women's History Month. Yeah. And then, of course, last week we had International Women's Day. And, you know, it is a great time to highlight what women in media are doing because for decades, if there was a woman running a show, which was rare enough, you know, typically she would be called not the nicest names, even if what she was doing was exactly what a man would do running a show, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. So if you take someone like Shonda Rhimes, who's most famous for Grey's Anatomy and Scandal, um, and how to get away with murder. She had an overall deal with ABC and Netflix just sort of, you know, <laughs> they reeled her in, they a little bit. in. And now um, it's been about, it'll be two years this summer that she's had this deal going with Netflix to create original content for them, which is really amazing. She is um, the wealthiest uh, showrunner, female showrunner wow. in Hollywood. She's worth uh, about $135 million, give or take, according to Forbes. But what characteristics of hers do you think have made her such a success? Well, you know, she did not, like most people in Hollywood, her first um, attempt was not a success. That will happen. She uh, started off as a screenwriter, and then she, you know, had a couple of different shows here and there, and, you know, that were... Uh, and then Grey's Anatomy came, and, you know, when Grey's Anatomy started, it was a mid-season replacement in 2005. Mm -hmm. And ABC just said, ah, all right, we'll give this one a try. And then, of course, you know, here we are 100 years later, and it's still on the air, <laughs> one of the most popular the shows. Dreamy or McSteamy, I still have <laughs> exactly. exactly. You talk about Beyonce, Oprah, mm -hmm. Lady Dunham, and Ariana Huffington. Why are, what is the common genre for you? With well, you know, I really just wanted to highlight some of the, the biggest names where, you know, obviously you can't have any list of powerful women in Hollywood that doesn't include Oprah. Mm. I mean, you know, a house will fall on you if you do so i don't recommend it um and she is just you know the oprah effect is an actual um it, it's an actual effect that exists that's not just about oprah it's really about the effect of any influential um that any influential person can have over an audience um when they have limited information on something and they're only getting the opinion of that person so like oprah says this is the best mug you can ever drink out of everybody goes and drinks out of that mug. Therefore, it is the best mug ever. Exactly. Her endorsement is gold. Rob's exactly. worked on the OWN Network before. Yes. So what do you well, think? Well, the OWN Network is what's so amazing because, you know, when it started, everyone said, oh, look at it. You know, no one's watching it. You know, this is a huge fail for Oprah. She thought she could run her own network. And Oprah kept saying, guys, you know, it takes a minute. Mm -hmm. And thank God she really gave it the time that it needs to nurture and grow a network. And look at the types of shows that she's doing on it. She features so many African-Americans on her shows and, and women. She has women showrunners. And she's really putting kind of programming on that just really speaks to people that I think haven't really had a place to land for a, a, ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Rob, what yeah, was, was your experience like? Oh, my gosh. It was amazing, actually. It was amazing. And I know that in the beginning, it was such a challenge, right? Just as they continued building and they were swapping a lot of people out. There was a lot of turnover. Yes. Um, do you feel that there will ever be anyone as powerful as Oprah? Because that's Great one thing question. I feel like. You know, it's an interesting question. There are a few people who are, I think, close to her level of power. I mean, you could say on the publishing side, maybe it's Anna Wintour. Um, Ellen DeGeneres certainly has quite a uh, little uh, media mogul but we, empire But we look growing. at the numbers because I mean, when Oprah was back in the day, there's only so many channels. Exactly. So like, oh. Ellen still only has like a very small sliver compared to yes. what Oprah had. It's pretty fascinating that it is. there's so many outlets. So where do you see those outlets going? Because I think that like a Netflix, of mm -hmm. course, has kind of taken the market by surprise because there's so many different media outlets. But there are, I think it's still going to go into certain like main ones. What do you see? Well, the thing is, is that, um, you know, what Netflix did is it sort of opened up the eyes of the other networks to say we need to do something that's a little bit racier that's a little bit more challenging the norms of what we would typically put on television and so netflix netflix actually sort of opened up the doors for the networks to say mm -hmm. oh my gosh we better step it up a little bit to compete with that kind of programming but i think for somebody like oprah i mean oprah's worth 2.5 billion dollars she her show was number one for 24 seasons mm -hmm. in a row <laughs> 
We, I mean, it's yeah. just, I don't think we'll ever see right? anything like that again. We listened to the, po sorry, because it was so profound, right? All of us listened to this three series podcast because um, uh, Elle, Elle was on the show as well here, her producer. And it was like, it was fascinating to listen to how they, they saw, I mean, how many years? 25 years? Mm -hmm. They were, I mean, it took them a long time. They didn't even know what, what guests they were having on the show and stuff. So it gives, I think every, it gives everybody hope to know that they didn't have it all figured out. No one has it figured out. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till it's perfect to That's make it so happen. That's so true. And the other thing is that a lot of people don't realize, but Oprah works really hard. You know, I have a lot of clients. I'm a talent coach and I have a lot of clients and I say, you know, what do you want to be? And they say, I want to be the next Oprah. And I said, but what does that mean? Because yeah, we'd all like to be worth $2 billion, right? But you know, there's so much work that goes with that. And that's Ellen DeGeneres, it's the same thing. She, Ryan Seacrest and Oprah, I would say Ryan and Ellen are the two closest to sort of getting up there into that same sort of stratosphere. Ellen works so hard. She has a team and she expects them to work so hard. You know, this is not good enough. You know, this is where she wants her team to be every single day. So people might disparage Ellen when they, you know, work for her, say, oh, you know, she's she's so tough and she's a well, yeah, because, you know, she's a woman, she's yeah. a businesswoman, yeah. and you know, and she's trying to keep her audience as well as grow it every single day. Uh -huh. And that takes a lot of work. And that mm -hmm. brings to this manifestation, right? We're talking about like who are you being? And that's what you are touching on. These people are being every single day. They are like, you know, Absolutely. every single breath is intentional. Oprah could have quit when she was done with her talk show. She could have quit, you know, 15 <laughs> years into her talk show. And she'd still have a billion dollars. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And she'd still be richer than the queen of England <laughs> yes. herself. Exactly, but you know, it's all about, you know, perseverance and saying that this isn't enough for me. I can do more and I want to do more. So what, I love this, what other, I guess, traits or qualities, maybe even skill sets, mm -hmm. do you see in some of these really successful, powerful women like Oprah, Beyonce, Shonda Rhimes? You know what? They are not intimidated by other intelligent women. Mm -hmm. They embrace that. I don't know if you've ever worked for a female boss where maybe she saw that you were really talented and she sort of maybe kind of pushed you down because of her own insecurities. Mm -hmm. These women, they embrace other women like them who are hard workers and who have the determination to get it done and they help them rise. And I really think that is the most important characteristic of any woman who's really going to make it in Hollywood. You have to embrace the other women. For sure. Collaborations, mm -hmm. everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yes. a really good point too, because I and you know, one of the things that we know from science is that really extraordinary people, they are very good at outsourcing, delegating things to people who are better or maybe mm -hmm. more inspired to do certain kinds of activities. Is that something you see also with these women like Oprah and Yes, of course. I mean, Oprah said, Okay, I want to start a network. Am I going to run the network? No, I'm going to bring in the people who know how to do this. And that is having that, you know, insight into yourself to say, you know, I'm not the person that needs to do all of this, but I can put an amazing team together. That is such a tribute of any successful woman in business, really. One of my favorite Beyonce quotes is, the only thing I ever bet on is myself mm -hmm. because she knows she's never going to fail. Mm -hmm. What a powerful leader and what a powerful representation of what it really means to be self-confident, to know your worth, to be able to show up and lead in that way. And what's so amazing about Beyonce and Jay-Z and their whole family is that they run the narrative. Mm -hmm. You will not see a story come up about them that has some sort of, you know, footage that they are not overseeing. Even the, the famous elevator footage from years ago, they still managed to find sort of a way to get around How that. How do they do that though? I mean, they must have the best publicists in Hollywood. It, it, you know, it, it takes a village and that's really true. And that is why I always say that, you know, any Hollywood star who doesn't want things to be found out about them or doesn't want to be followed to the airport <coughs> or doesn't, you know, want people to be on their tail can control it. They just have to choose to. And sometimes, you know, it's a little, it's good for their image to be seen and be spotted. So they might be tipping people off and saying, here's where you can find yeah. it. <laughs> That's a little secret you don't know yeah, about exactly, Hollywood. Exactly. I'm going to be at Craig's later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I will tip off the paparazzi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having For continuing me. to pioneer here in Hollywood. We really appreciate it. Tell everyone where they can find and follow you and work with you. I'm at Robin Raiden on Instagram. And my website is RobinRaiden.com. Oh, thank, you thank you so you much, Robin. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Good Morning Wildland.